Okay. We are on the Pioneer Racing Pigeon Club of Ontario page, and we are live right now. Hello, everybody. This is Leah Ryan and Loft Manager Richard. Reading 101. Hi, folks. Episode 2. We're going to do it again. Try it again. Are we already on, are we already are we already on episode 2? Two? We are on episode 2. Today, we're going to talk about lighting, separating, and nest bowls. Go ahead, Ryan. And we, so got, we got special, special guest. guest. In, in the, the studio, studio today, today, we want you people that are watching to put in your comments below what you think the special guest is. Or Towards the end of the show, we're going to bring it up. Big tip, tip, tip today. Big tip, tip today. today. A little bit of echo, echo, but that's, but okay. that's okay. Oh, yeah, the echo seems to go in and out. We've got some new audio equipment that we're testing out today, so hopefully everybody can hear us, and if you hear an echo, well... You're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to just kind of deal with it for today. So we're just waiting to make sure that everybody can see us. And hopefully I'm not on a test stream. Let me check. Yeah. I would like to say hello. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning, tuning in. in. And hopefully we can have a, a friendly conversation and we can learn um, for, for the, the best. best. Hmm. We've got a lot of experience here, Ricky. Well, we do. We yeah. have. I have uh, 60 years. Mm -hmm. uh, my two grandfathers were pigeon flyers, mm -hmm. so you could bank them off. So basically, there's a lot of material that I've forgotten that, you know, I can't write it all down. So we're going to talk together, and we're going we're gonna to make it something good. I'm good. We're going to make a good cake today. We are, yeah, we're going to try today. and bake that cake. We are you know? talking about lighting, separating, and nest bowls. We've got Henry in the house, Dave Ottaway, and Mike Vandriak. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Where do we? Let's get into it. What do we want to talk about first? Uh, lighting, separating, or nest bowls? Um, let's talk about. I think, I think separating. Separating is before, before you put the lights on. And again, you want your birds to be pretty much through their molt when you're going to separate. Uh, some people will separate early in the year, midway through. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm with you here at the table, and I'm going to throw you one of these dummy questions. Not a dummy question. It's a good question. Why would you want to separate when they're through their molt? What does that mean? Well, you want them to get through the molt. So they're finished their molt. So they're done. Birds that go through a good molt, I think if they stay together. Excuse their... me, I just got to uh, scrope my eyelid here. Okay, yeah. No. We're having fun today. Okay. That's give not, me, give me that's your not answer. a good enough answer. Give me your answer. You have your answer. My, my answer is when birds, I got a lot of echoing here on this system. So take this out of here. Give me the answer. Okay. When birds are molting mm -hmm. and you have them together, okay, and you should wait till that molt is finished mm -hmm. because if you uh, separate before, mm -hmm. you are uh, initiating a stress mm -hmm. on the birds. Now, and can I ask you a question? question? Just wait. I, I want to ask you a question, though. What is it? Do you wait right until they're done the tenth? Can you do it at the eighth? Well, this this is why I I wait mm -hmm. till after uh, de December mm -hmm. when I see the molt is through. Mm -hmm. Then I separate because mm -hmm. birds go through a depression mm -hmm. if they're at end if the molt is not properly through. It okay affects the bird number one. What I like to see is, is a the full molt because a month after, if I happen to put my birds together, now the initiation of creating the best eggs. When a bird's molting and trying to bring in new feathers, he cannot produce a hundred percent the best reproduction. Mm. Good That's point. why I do it. Good point. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So you you want to completely wait? Yeah. Okay. So I, I, like I recommend to completely it. wait. There so you go. completely wait until the molt 
they're finished molting 100 percent before you pair them up right Bef no before the separation separation ah, before Separate. the separation right. that's right so and you your birds are separated now correct that's right and how long have they been separated for they've been separated for about three weeks three weeks a uh, question for you because uh, we've been talking about pairing Right. Um, I know you have the lights on. How, How are, are the, the birds, birds since you've had them about three, three weeks or, or, or a month apart, apart how, how are they acting now today? I hear a lot of music. Right. Okay. Do they want, want to get, get back, back together? together? Right. It's perfect. Once, Once they, they start, start to hear that music, music it's telling me. And for those of us who maybe don't know, when you talk about music, I, I, I hear, hear uh, I hear cooing. I hear, you know, I hear, I hear the cocks going. And when I walk in the loft, the hens, when I go to feed, they strut for me. That means like a hot woman in the bar. Right. You know right. what I mean? Right. That tells me they're ready to go. Okay, and I have, I have a few questions here because I'm very, even though I've been around pigeons my whole life, I'm fairly new at this, well, very new at this, and very new at breeding. And I'm sure there are some people who are tuned in now who are absolutely brand new to it as well. So the first basic question, when can right. I breed? Can I breed all year long or is there a certain time? Like how does the breeding schedule work? Do you want me to answer that, Shrine? Go ahead, Richard. Yeah. You're on fire today. I can feel it in you. I say, when I got my birds separated and I start to hear the music, I'm going to go, I'm almost ready to put them together. Now, if I want to, if I want to put, well, I got a lot of echoing on this here. It's okay. okay. It if I want to put them together next week, I will. Or if I want to wait a little longer, I will. You know, they're just telling me. So you, you do a lot of just watching. So if I say to you, we don't want early youngsters. We don't, we don't want them early. early. When he, would, would you, you still, still separate, separate them? them? Oh, I would separate them. And uh, once, once the mold finish, you separate. Yeah, I, I separate. And I, I wouldn't, wouldn't put the lights on. You wouldn't put the lights until on. Until about three weeks before I want them, want to put them together. And if you guys are listening and you hear him, uh, Richard here talking about the birds groaning and cooing. He separated them. He had them, I think, separated for about a week. Then he turned the lights eye on, and now we're at about three weeks, four weeks. The birds are groaning. You go out there, it's music, music, music. You see the hens even on the the ledge of the window. They're strutting across. Well, in their separate section. Right. So basically, Richard, what you're saying is when the birds get through the molt, and I mean again, if you have 25, 25 or 30, 40, Can I scratch my eyelid here? Thank you. Good. Hold on. There you there go. go. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So you lost my train of thought here. When 95% of your birds are done the molt, separate them out. Okay? Separate your hens. Separate your cocks. Always leave the cocks, I think, in the section on where you want to breed them for the following year. So they have their nest boxes. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So don't don't put them in a section with V perches and pole perches and No, they should have their boxes, yep. Yeah. And and let them get their real estate, be comfortable, comfortable. Uh, know their box. The hens, yeah, you can have them on pole perches. V purges. Well, you should in, in their sections. Yeah. Right. No, don't don't have the hens in nest boxes because what'll happen is once they get ready, they they I, I should say that they could want to mate. Yeah, they queer up. That's right. That's right. Queer up. That's a is that well, a, a good, good word to use? Right? Today. You know, it's a good. It's wait, like well, if you well, said well, I was a queer, queer would, that would that be wrong? wrong? They queer up. Anyway, naturally they will want to go together. Yeah. That's so, right. So I have and another, they're I have, healthy. Go ahead, Leah. I have another question. Klaus, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Um, 
Is it the same pairing all season long? Or this is probably another dumb question, but or can you switch them halfway through? Well, you can oh, switch. Half, halfway through, well, you've got to, uh, you've you've got got to, to take, take the cock out, out. Act, uh, because there's going to be a problem there. I, I, I think it's a real easy way. If you had two sections, you have maybe eight cocks in one section, eight cocks in another sec- section, and you want to switch, switch some of the matings, you take hens from one section move them into the other yeah a little bit easier you can switch pairs you just have to be patient take your time separate the pair the cock's going to need about three four five days and get turned on again i I think this fellow might might be talking about maybe bowling a cock with with two or three or five hens well i don't think it was bowling it's just a simple question well he wants to switch a pair switch switch a pair Take the two blues and put it to the checker. Just like that. But in the same section, uh, put it in the same section, it's not going to work. It, it's a little difficult. Yeah, it is. So it's difficult. Should, so what you're saying is you should really uh, make your pairs up, like figure out who you want to mate to who before you start putting them together, correct? And then that you leave that pair throughout the whole season. I, I would think that's the right way to do it. I don't think you should go and, and say, well, well, that cock and that hen, well, I'm going to have two, two rounds of young ones, and now I'm, I'm going to take, take a, take a, take a, a I'm, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, if, if you, you want to take, take the hen away and put a cock, put put uh, put, put, that, put another hen in with that cock, okay, that's, that's going to work. It's easier, slowly, but uh, that's the only way. I, I would think you're going to leave your cocks where they are and you'll add a hen to them. Okay. Take the other hen away. Yeah. So you take, take the hen away, add another hen in. You're okay. But yes. you're not going to take the cock, put them in a new section with that hen. Doesn't, doesn't work as good. Okay. No. And I, I, I think what they got is, I think what, they, what we have to do is we have to, we have to start all over again with that cock. If you want him to go with another hand, right. put her, put him back in the box and he has to flirt with her on the ledge and yep. whatever. Right. So you basically have to start right from the beginning. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So we have some comments and questions, which I'm going to get into now from Henry. Henry asks, uh, when they are separated, are the males able to see the females and vice versa? Or is it better that they are unable to see each other? Better that they are unable. Yes. And if you do have them separated in a loft where uh, you can't take the hands away, uh, put, uh, put, put sliding up about maybe, maybe three feet off the floor with plywood down on the bottom so they can't uh, communicate and have the perches for the hens on the uh, far part of the wall so they won't be able to communicate as much that's right right you know you 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 may may not not have two loss so you're 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 kind of in a a, like i like to take the hands right Right out. out Put them in, in a, a section, section where they, they don't, don't even, even see them, them they, they don't, don't hear them, them nothing. Okay? okay? So if you can't do that, have sl- have sl- uh, ladding. What do you call it? ladding up or dowling and have maybe about three feet off the floor and nowhere that the hands or the cocks can sit uh, along the dowling or the uh, ladding to communicate. That's it. Oh, very good. Very good. Good question and a really great answer. Um, that was a good answer. Um, I agree. Dave I agree. Ottaway, he has signed in here. We've got a comment from Dave. Dave says, that's what I do. I leave them in their boxes all year. I separate as soon as I am done breeding. It's better for the moles. The feathers roll off faster without the hen just my way. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Another yeah. way. Okay, so we've discussed separating. What else do we need to know about separating? Mm, I think that's pretty much it. How long are they I mean, and again, a, a good time. 
How long are they separated We've... for again? Oh, I, I separate them for at least a month and a half before I want to put them together. He does about a month, a month and a half. Month and a month and a half. Yeah. I vaccinate them. I know me and Sam and Ella. I know some guys do separate earlier. Again, there's different ways to bake a cake. Uh, I've seen guys, like Dave says, he, he separates, separates as soon as he's done breeding. I've, we went to places in Europe. They leave them together three weeks before they're, they're going to start, start pairing. Then they separate them, and they do more so like what you do. What I believe, if you st separate at, uh, at the end of breeding, birds are going through their molt. Mm -hmm. Okay? And when you do that, you create stress, stress between, between the pairs. pairs. Okay? okay? It's, it's like, like all right, okay. I, it's we, like, we, we it's, we get it's that. like a man and a wife. All right, we get that. They separate. Right. You've you got, got depression, depression right? stress. Okay. And try and keep everything as natural as you can till the end. If you keep the pairs together, cut back on the feed, cut back on that energy maybe to reproduce. Mm. There you go. Very good. I don't know. Let's good idea. Lighting. We, let's talk a little bit about lighting. Ooh, I like long... lighting. Pardon? I like lights. People make a lot of mistakes with the lights. I think. I think they do. Well, I say, I say, lighting. Okay. Some people say, guess what? I put the lights on. I'm getting a lot of echoing out of this, but I put the lights on uh, from October or 24 hours a day. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. No, I got no echoing. Well, that's good. Carry Whatever on. you did. You there? Yeah. yeah. I'm here. Can, Can you, you hear, me? hear me? Yes. Perfect. No, I got no Hold echoing. On. Keep her going. Just something happened. Keep her before going. I had, okay. Keep going with your story. <clears throat> and some people say, I keep the lights on 20. Now I can hear it from there. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, I keep the lights on 24 hours a day from uh, October, let's say, right till April. Yep. Well, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you fine, yep. No, you sound real good. I got no echoing. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, I believe that... <sighs> Oh, yeah, there's uh, an echo feedback on your thing. On my end. Sorry, guys. We're just trying to sort out this uh, headphone issue. All right. Okay. Here, yeah, here we up, go. Please. Now we can hear Hello? you. Go ahead. Okay. You're going to have to listen to Leah through there. And you're going to have to use your so outside now, voice, please. Hear. Go ahead. That's as much as you can hear. You're going to have to listen. It was go. good before. Okay. Go ahead. What were you saying? I'm saying the birds have to have the rest. Keep that lights on 24 hours a day or whatever. They have to have the rest. Right. So you don't think when you're going to put the lights on three weeks before to a month before you want to start breeding, yeah. you don't. How long do you put the lights on? I put them on. I put them on from 3.30 in the afternoon. Right. Till about 9.30, 10 at night. Right. And that's it. So you give them about 16, 17 hours a day. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Put the lights on in your bedroom. You don't sleep as good. We get that. You don't that. sleep. You can't sleep. So the hearts need that rest. Right. There's only so much time right. that they well, get. Well, you right. have to give them the clock, right? You got to give them the clock. You put lights on 24 hours a day, there's no clock. That's it. That's right. Mother, right, Leah? Mother, right. Mother Nature turns a light on in the morning. Daylight. Right now, it's about, what, quarter to eight? And then shuts it down around 4.30, quarter to five. That's it. Now, let's just make sure. So Leah, can Leah, you, can you hear us? Like yeah, we can light. hear you fine. I can hear you fine. So what you're hear. basically trying to do is, I'm assuming, you're trying, because I don't really know up? myself. Just listen. You're tricking them into uh, thinking that it's springtime, the days are getting longer, and it's time to mate right. up. Correct? That's that's correct. Okay. That is right. That's exactly what you're trying to do. Yes. You're, you're trying to tell them that it's springtime. Now, if you were to just leave the birds regular, right? around, what would you say, around middle of February, as those days slowly start to get longer? Well, let me tell you something. I know some people that have said, you know, Richard, 
the chemistry in the reproductive system is different to from one bird to the next mm -hmm. or from any animal right okay they say well i put my five birds five pair of birds together and they didn't put lights on and i got two pair man they're down on eggs perfect they separate them right put them together down on eggs perfect the three pair no wait i'm going to go three pair went down on eggs but two pair i don't think they're mated they act like they're not interested i say wait did you put lights on no i didn't so right there i think that can be your problem right so right. We, we're recommending if you are going to breed early give them the lights you're going to help out your breeding probably 85 percent and the other thing with breeding you got to use the right light bulbs okay the fluorescent tube lights you know the big long ones when you drop them they go boof those aren't real light for pigeons these squiggly lights you see them we don't like using them either we like to use the old cheapy right here canadian tire 60 60 what is 60 it? watt bulb 60 watt bulb natural light kind of got a yellowy glow to it leah if you put that video on there you'll see i have the lights on in the loft it's I, not I, super bright yeah i'm gonna put the video on in, in one second i just have a couple questions with regards to lighting um, Klaus has a question and he's asking how long before mating should you turn the lights on? How long before mating? Yeah. Three it, weeks to a month. Yeah, about, about three weeks to a month. Give yourself a little more time. You're going to see when you get past the two week mark, you'll start to see it. You'll start to turn on. You get to three weeks by four weeks, they're going crazy. So give yourself a little bit more time. But again, uh, like, my dad says, Ricky here, keeps the lights every day the same. The birds wake up with the morning light. He gives them the artificial light about two hours before it's actual dark. So those birds don't feel Any like roosting. Kind of way way more. I go like at 3.30 in the afternoon. Right. Because if you look right now, uh, if you look out the backyard, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Birds are already roosting. Roosting. So you got to have so the so lights on before. You, you've got to do that before. Yeah. Do See? it around 3.30 and keep it on till 9.30, 10 o'clock. And, and now my uh, what you said to me, what, uh, something there, I forgot what I, you said. But I can I, repeat it. Say it again. What you want to do is be consistent with the time. That's right. It's the same thing as darkening pigeons. You don't darken them half the week from morning to then so dark the them afternoon. in the evening, afternoon, then switch them halfway through the week. You don't reverse. Pigeons like the system. That's I believe. Right. So keep the system the same. You're going to find the results much, and, much and better. And you know what? You, you're going to find out if you go outside, out, out of your loft, don't go in, but just walk out to your loft after a couple weeks or three weeks of this lighting that you're doing yep. you're going to automatically hear you're going to you're going to you're going to hear that stip that uh, stimulation. stimulation and you got your hands separate walk out when you feed and you're going to make a couple you're going to see the hens going to start to strut to you. That's right. That's going to tell you strut means they know what they're, they're doing. They're going to put their wings down. They're going to strut around. They're going to bob their heads to you. They're going to bob their heads to you. That means I'm it's feeling working. it. It's working. I'm getting ready. ready. Getting That's ready. Right. Getting ready. So I'm just going to get to a few comments here. Uh, Klaus says without lights around here works well around March 1st. So I'm okay, sure. uh, 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 where's this fellow talking about? So, so uh, he's he out west. Markham, out west. Oh, west. west. What? Okay. I know, Albert. Yeah. Uh, let Let me say something. If you If you find if 
you keep them totally in the dark. Around the 15th or 20th of January, the daylight starts to, we get uh, what, 10 or two, 10, 15 minutes more daylight. Right. right. It will start to generate the process. I've, I've, I've tried it in the past. I had a hen one time. I left her in with about 10 cockbirds for an experiment. And I thought, let's just see here. I didn't take her away. I guess she's going to be laying eggs all winter. Ten cocks. They're anxious. Okay, yeah. And all of us, like, I'm just saying, uh, okay, so what system, happened? cut back the feet. How many, how many rounds did you get out of that head? No, just wait. Okay. All of a sudden, things shut down. With my fee control. Right. Right. And the lighting. They had no light. Okay. Just right. Right. Around the 15th to the 20th of January. Right. Boom. All of a sudden, bang, that hen, she went down on eggs. So, I mean, it'll actually start around that time. But I, I was expecting, because I left her in there purposely. Right. For the summer, yeah, to the end, to see what would happen, and all of a sudden she shut down about whatever October, yeah. That Cox never chased her, nothing, nothing, but but around the, the let's say the fifteenth, twentieth of January, boom, bang, she went down, and and so that doesn't mean that if you're gonna put all your hands in at that time that they're all going to go down no I so won't. so if you put 10 hands in there maybe you're going to get six or eight go down the other three or four or whatever pair uh you, what you're going to wait you got to remember you had one hand in with 10 cocks there's going to be one cock with a little more crazy and a little more push out but I, I we got a question believe it or not in that section yeah. i thought these cocks are going to be chasing that hand one this guy's going to chase her this guy's going to chase her. they're all going to chase her no Everyone went dormant. Fire away, Leah. Uh, look at it this way. Robins go south, but we got doves hanging around here. Right. They don't lay eggs down. The blue jays don't lay eggs down. Right. You know, the little, well, the, it's, whatever. It's, we're, in the off, we're in the off season. It's the, well, it's the forging season. It's because of the light. The light. Yeah, that's light, right. right. We, don't, we don't see roses outside now, do you? No, There's you no don't. light. That's why. But, go ahead, Leah. I uh, know there's just some um, comments here, so I was just posting up the comments so everybody could read them. I can't really hear um, that. But yeah, Mike uh, Vanriak says that uh, it's a great topic. In my opinion, managing the light cycle is extremely important in both breeding and racing. Yeah, and, and I think uh, what we've learned through the years are pigeons in general, they're not light switches. If you want to win, or you want to be successful in pigeon sport, have a system the whole year long. Have a system. Keep to a system. Follow a routine. Follow the feeding. Follow the lighting system. Following your training. Watch your pigeons. These are all things that work together. And it's called leaving, what do they say, no stone unturned. And right. it's the guys who win, the people who do well, less stones, they leave unturned. I'm just saying. Yes. I, I right now, well, huh? you're going to get them ready. Right. To go down on eggs. Okay. Because I want a little bit earlier round the young ones. Right. Okay. If I was going to say, I don't want to put them together till the first of March. Right. I wouldn't go with the, I won't put my lights on. You're, right. I don't leave everything dormant. My, my pairs are separated. Right. right? And then. About the middle of January, you're going to start to hear the cockbirds. You're going right. to start with that little bit of light going. But if I want to motivate so I can get young ones, everyone down together. You're going to put the lights. I got the lights on. And right now, yeah. I'm thinking about putting my birds together. Right. Right. Believe it or not, I wanted to do it a week ago, but I didn't. But the lights are on, so they're ready. They're getting ready to go. Ready There's to go. nothing about nothing wrong with being ready well no 
You know what I'm saying? You can't rush it. Well, you can't rush it, but they're ready. My they're pairs are ready right now to go. I'm going to have an early pair. I had pairs last year. I didn't put them together till the 1st of March. I got four rounds of young ones by, what was it, the end of April? Yeah. Out of that pair. You did some switching and moving, and the well, pair, the babies came out good, and that's great. We're, we're going to talk about we switching. Spoke before about taking young Right. Ones. We're, right. we're, gonna, we're not getting on to that today because, no. boy, that's one hell of a long road to get to. Leah, yeah. do you have any other questions there? Um, no other questions. We've got lots of great comments. Thanks, guys. Uh, the thing I want to say, I want to say one good. thing, and I'm going to butt in here. I appreciate Mike Vanderjack, Dave Ottaway. Uh, they've had pigeons for years. And this, these questions are so great. They're good. Or answers are so great because the beginners... Uh, it helps them to learn. Without these questions and our answers for a beginner, it helps. It, 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 helps. it really helps. It really helps it because does. you know, and that's what and that's what this show is based to do. Yeah, uh, we're here to give you some tips, some tricks to help you be successful. Because you know what, a lot of years, you, you, you know, people make mistakes. They can never figure it out. And you know, why didn't somebody tell me? Uh, you know, like we say, even with the light bulbs, it's not the most fanciest light bulb, but this is the one you need. I've seen people just, putting just, the two lights just, in. Just wait. They don't do nothing. Just wait a minute. Some guys tell me I put these light bulbs in. Yeah. I put two light two bulb in. It's brighter than bright. Yeah. No wait. They say I don't have a problem. Well, wait a minute. They maybe had ten pair, or you know, ten pair, maybe six pair went down. But the other three or four pair, they didn't go down. Why? Well, because I heard fluorescing. Uh, fluorescent it's not the right light. And you know what? I, we've never tried, and I'd love to, when we build a breeding loft, it's one of these days we're good at. I am going to use, I'm going to spend a little extra money, and I'm going to go with the hydroponic lights. I think that'll be. Does that produce heat in there too? No. But oh, the hydro that's... hydroponic lighting is like the lighting that they use to maybe like grow nurs ups. nurseries grow ups. Yeah, grow ups. So so grow doesn't produce heat. It doesn't it's produce like heat. a heat lamp. It's, it's not a heat, heat lamp, but it's it's going to give them the best sunlight. Hey, that's a good question. Has any has anybody out there, anybody watching, has anybody tried to use the hydroponic lighting system in their loft? And if so, well, that's a great question. Well, how, how were your results? What, Maybe we say? should, you know, run a little experiment. But I'm just going to run the clip, Ryan. Um, I'm going to show the video just inside the loft Maybe so everybody can that. just see exactly how bright uh, it is in the loft when we have the lights on. I'm going to run that video right now, and everybody can just have a look, okay? Okay, run it runner. Right now. So there, I'm just, I'll just talk our way through this here. This is the breeding section, and I believe this video was taken close to the sun setting. Yeah, but that's that, right. That is uh, basically the brightness, and you can see the little breeding boxes there. You'll see the light there in a second. Right there, look. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Nothing over the top. It gives them enough light, the right light. That's it. The birds you see there on the dry litter, we got some boxes open, the bottom ones we leave open. We've got some teepees there. Simple, works good. Yeah, and this is the, isn't a fancy setup, folks. This is probably similar to what everybody else sees in their own lofts. Um, but this is just to show how this kind of lighting, this kind of box setup is very effective. It's worked for Richard and Ryan for years and years and years. But that's just a little brief glimpse into the brief. No, I mean, we, we did this, 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 at, at, this, this, at, this was at night, night time. Can you, can you hear me, Leah? Yeah, I can hear you, yep. And uh, I have a, a, just wait, does this work now? Just put it in your ear. Which one? Just put it in your ear. <laughs> Hello? There we go. Just go put ahead. it in your ear and listen. Hello? Yes, go ahead. No, it's not coming through. Okay. Go okay, ahead. One sec, folks. That's fine. Go ahead. Hey, just talk, please. Okay. Uh, we went in there at, uh, it was at nighttime, 
and I have a, a large fly pen uh, out there, and the most of the birds were out the fly pen. Like, if you want to go out there right now, Ryan, right. you can go out there right now and just don't disturb them, and they'll all be sitting inside. Right, they'll all be sitting and, inside in their boxes, and what we're saying is, it don't have to be summer, summertime bright lights. Put a, put a 60 watt light bulb in, you got it. That's it. Let's not let's not overcomplicate this wheel here. Simple. Yeah. Right. Leah, you there? I'm here. Yeah, I'm just re I'm just taking a look at the comments here. Uh, Dave says. I, that I, I love the questions can, can coming you, in. I really you, like. Can you let Leah okay. ask the questions? Dave says I use all tube lights and had 98 percent fertility rate in the last four years. It works for Dave. So all tube. tube. Yeah, the tube uh, ones. So that, I mean, that's great. I guess uh, yeah. maybe Ryan, I've, you, I've you never had luck with. You've not had luck with the tube lights, right? No, I didn't even have them when you when you turn them on for for the darkening. The birds seem to keep molting through. I, I we like these little cheapies, man. They work. They seem to work great. But again, I don't know. I don't know if you can get tube lights that are natural light. And if you do, you if you can, something like this. Yeah, something like this, or or those tube lights. You just want what's it called? Natural light. Natural light. Natural light. And if you find the bulbs that are natural light, great. I know those LED lights, I don't think they will work at all. If you're sitting, you want to save on hydro, I don't think LEDs are going to work for you. Um, Klaus I says, so let me just uh, put his comment up. Uh, he says tube lights are available with a natural light spectrum. So you can. There you get, go. There you go. Right. So you, you absolutely can get the tube lights, now that we know, with the natural light. And it's working for Dave. So there's another option. Get the tube lights with the natural light. Try those. If that's not working for you, then show that light bulb again there, Ryan, that little cheapy that you, literally you can get them anywhere. What is, what's the wattage on that? You can get them 60, 60, watt. 60 watt bulb. And, 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 you and want I'll, to put a hundred, go ahead. You want to put a hundred to make yourself feel better. You're great. We put one of these in a, in a, in a 12 by eight section, one, more than enough, more than enough light. And, and again, if you find those tube lights, like Klaus said, they're going to work for you as well. So we got uh, Mike, Close. Close, and Dave. And Dave. Uh, and a lot of good questions here. They've been in pigeons for years. Yep. And they have good questions, not good questions. Good. They have good information. Good, okay, questions good information. And, and answers. And what I like is that the new people, new comers. Right. right. Are please listening yeah. to yeah, exactly. to the to us. So we're going to move on. We've now talked about lighting. Let's move on to nest bowls, nest bowl materials, and some options that you guys can use in your breeding system. We, we we've got we've got the old standard, your clay nest bowl. Okay, these things are great. They're heavy. You break them, they break easy. A lot of people use these. Again, you're going to see this one. This one hasn't been cleaned out at all. And again, we're going to talk about why that is. But this is your first option. Do you want to talk about why? What, what, what I like in here is these things are a little ventilated on the bottom. Right? they got a small ventilation right. there, right. a couple holes. Okay. So hold that just, up. If you can, I mean, you folks can't see it. Can I hold it? But so I in show? here, I do have an S pad in the bottom. So there's a nest pad. In there. So there's a nest pad in the bottom. There's an old nest bowl, it's maybe a year old. That's how it is after a couple rounds of babies. We've left them like this. Sometimes we leave them for two, three, four years. Nest bowls like this, the lad straw to them. Good old nest bowls. A lot of times you have to watch out with straw because if you get pears, they'll just keep building up, building up. Next thing you know, they're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're 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 knocking it off. The straw is falling over. The eggs are going out, right? In this bowl here, I'll put, I will put. I'll pick the young ones up. I'll put a little bit of dusting powder in the bottom, mm -hmm. right, to stop any uh, right. you know lice or whatever mites. We like normally a, don't like have a that problem. A louse powder. Louse powder, yeah. Louse powder, yeah. Old nest bowls are great. Again, if you go under bridges, you go in barns, pigeons. Don't get these things cleaned out. Uh, you can leave an old nest bowl. There's nothing wrong with it. 
It has years of what you call success. So let me just see some. Just one sec. Guess what, guys? No smell, no smell no pigeon in there. Back to what I was saying. Do you want to smell it one more time? Just for the audience? Sure. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. To me, it just smells just double beautiful. Check yeah. Again, you don't have to worry about scraping these out, cleaning these out. If you do that, it's for pigeon guys. They like to do that. I've seen pigeon guys roll these things in newspapers. Okay? They roll them. They make a big Christmas present out of it. They roll it up, and they, they got it well, going they say on. it keeps the mice, uh, the lice right. off. Is that what mice, they say? mice. Yeah. Newspaper. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, a lot of healthy your pigeons are normally healthy and happy, and everything's good. You're not going to have that problem. How many lice you got? I don't have lice. Would you wrap your Would you wrap your nest bowls in newspaper? I Do know. the wild pigeons wrap their nest bowls in newspaper? No, I never done it. I wouldn't waste my time. You know what I'd rather do? Sit on a feed pail and feed the pigeons and watch them. But there's option one. That's option one. That is a clay nest bowl. And you know what I do with those bowls before breeding? I may take the bowl and just turn it over in the nest box. Yeah, tip it upside down. Tip it upside down. And the hen, if I put the hen in, we're not talking about Once I that. introduce yeah. the cock. We're going to show that on another show. Right. But that, that's good. Put that over there, please. Well, that's option one. That's a good. Good. This, nest is, bowl. This, is, this is his absolute favorite nest bowl. You get them at Christmas time, these are the best. Really or good. if you drive around sure. after Christmas, you'll find people it. are putting them out in the garbage. Just pick <laughs> the darn are, things up. What are those? What is that, Ryan? Just in case anybody. They're mandarin know. tangerine boxes. Tangerine boxes. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. Well, you get tangerines with you get, them. You get tangerines with them if you buy them. If you ask your neighbors, they'll probably give them to you. If you go surf through the garbage on Wednesdays, whenever your garbage day is, you're going to find see them. them. The other thing too is take a look, people. Ventilation on the bottom. Ventilation on the okay. bottom. So Another we, thing. Now, yeah. we, we've talked twice about the whole the ventilation. Why is the ventilation in a nest bowl or a nest box or where they're nesting, why is that so important? Very important. Uh, why? Okay. Why? If you go in a dove's nest, right. find one, or go in a pigeon underneath a bridge or in a barn, they got pine needles, those long pine needles, right? Twigs, twigs, and it's all built up and it's all ventilation. It's all layers. It doesn't heat up. Uh, you know, don't put hay no. in there or wet grass. Nope. Don't do that. You go with right? pine needles, go with straw, straw, little, some weeds. You can cut down the dry weeds. That's good. That are right now, right now, right now we got the weeds that are like this high. Yeah. Cut the tops off. Cut them into pieces that are about six inches long. Boom. Bang. Put them down there. Again, some guys use those uh, tobacco. Uh, that's expensive, tobacco but you can sticks? use that. Tobacco sticks. Yeah, stick tobacco sticks. And what's real good is, if you're into this newspaper rolling thing and you're worried about lice and stuff like that, and that really bothers you, just use pine needles. The bugs hate pine needles. You got to find those pine needles that are about that long. The nice and soft you, ones. You see them, uh, where, wherever you see them. Yeah. Pull over. Pull over. Get raking them. Rake them up. Put them in bags and that's it. So let's see um, option number three. Option which is, three. This is an option, obviously, that we sell at the coop. Right. We got that the. Plastic. Go ahead, Ryan. Plastic nest bowl. And you're going to see, you can see my face. You can see my hand in here. Great ventilation in these. What's great about these, they're easy to clean if you want to clean them. They're real, real easy to clean. And what's great about them is... And these here, they snap. Yeah, they snap out. We'll, we'll show that. just figure this out. Again. You don't even need that. I'm trying to figure this out. You don't, have, you don't need that. Well, that's it's nice that's to it. show people if they want to put that in. Well, real simple. You put this in. This is a grass nest bowl. Like I say, Lothmanger Richard likes... Some of the other options. So this actually, I have an S pad in this one. Right. But she's and look, uh, and look at this. She's one right. second. Look at that. Done. You didn't need to take the white so, thing so off. Now what we should oh. do is we should get a cigarette and blow through here and show the people the air ventilation. That's right. These but we breathe. don't smoke. We don't smoke. It's a disgusting habit. We don't like to do that. <laughs> if you smoke, not a big deal. Yeah. Thank we you. We use. <laughs> So, Aaliyah, yeah. you smoke. You I should do. be here blowing smoke through this. I should. Anyways, be. 
It's ventilation. It's ventilation. These felt pads are great. You can use them one time, you can use them two times. When they're done, well, this, for one buck, throw them out. This has been through three or four nests. Three or four nests. So, There's a felt okay, pad so in here. That's my, next que that's my next question. That. That's my next question. Do you need to, I guess, obviously, you do not need to be cleaning this out between, obviously, rounds. Like, oh, are between you nests? Put... I'm not going to. Yeah. No way. I don't clean it out. I mean, we, we don't. I mean, and by when you add, when you do the the liners and the nest bowls, you can add a little bit of straw to your loft. You don't have to get crazy. A lot of the lofts, especially in Europe, they only use these nest pads. That is it. I put a little straw in the loft for what? to give some motivation. Motivation, right? They, you know what I mean. Got a lot of motivation, but it, have, it's a good uh, thing. I'm just gonna just butt in here. We have a comment from Chris Withers from the UK. He is watching, and uh, Chris says that uh, he uses the tobacco stalks. Now, have you guys tried the tobacco stalks? We we, we just, can't get them here, right? We can't get them. Well, we can't get them here. Oh. Uh, I don't. I think that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I, I, we, I, tobacco stalks, no problem. The pine needles, or uh, yeah, yeah, pine needles. Pine needles. Uh, again, you'll see the pigeons with like the straw, small twigs. Okay, but uh, pigeons, pigeons like the motivation, like, like you're saying. And if you use these again, guys, put out a little bit of straw. And what, what is motivation? Go in there. Put a fistful or two of fresh, put it down. The birds will run through it. They'll drag themselves through it. They'll pick up and they'll build their nest. I see some people, they take a whole bale and drop it in. You know what? It's overkill. Pigeons are like humans. They like fresh. It depends on how really cocky the, the strain is. Because I've seen pigeons put straw in there. Next thing, you got this little bowl. You got that much straw. And Too much. Like, they can't even get in the nest, That's and then right. the next thing, the nest falls over. You so, know, and, and this is what we're saying. So just watch how much you're putting putting out. Uh, again, I, I some some too. some pairs are idiotic, and they build the they build the they build a tower. And you know what? The way I sort of look at it is, there's a call in that pair right there, because number one, they don't have the control. Mother Nature is controlling that pair from breeding. That's how I'm looking at it. There's a fault. But if 20 pair are in there, I'm gonna, and there are two I'm pair argue, that make, I'm, make the I'm towers. I'm going to have to argue with you. Forget I the pair. I see some, uh, some strength in old birds that want to do that. I get that's, that. That's, that's a different. Uh, By the way, how do you live in life? You at. have to reproduce, right? So you have to be able to reproduce. And if you build Pigeon Tower Mountain and you can't keep your babies in there, that's a fault in the pair. I'm sorry, that's going to hurt some. But that's how I'm looking at it. Do you build loft, build nest bowls for pigeons? No, you don't. I don't. You don't. You don't have to. Pigeons do it on their own. I actually think the best nest bowl is one that's about. That's right. I hate to say it, five six years old. That's right because it's got a it's success. The bowl's working. This bowl, it sure don't look appetizing, does it? To, no. to the eye, but to the pigeon, there look. There's his lazy boy Susan in there. It's comfy. It's nice. I had babies in it last year. It works great. To it. That's right. You're gonna add some straw. This is nice. This is nice. And again, if you can't get to any of these, cut a piece of two by four this big. Put two pieces together. Nail them. A little L shape. Bang. Put it in the corner. They'll make a nest right there. Not reinventing a wheel here. Uh, we also do. Um like the grass nest bowls which unfortunately we don't have any in stock at the moment to show you all but uh, i know ryan is also a fan of the grass nest bowl which they're hopefully perfect they're yeah, they're they're before this series is over we will get our shipment back in and i will be able to we'll be able to show the grass nest bowl we do have some videos i believe on youtube that show the grass nest bowls. I know that Ryan and Richard are both real big fans of the grass that's a hundred percent uh uh better go Luxury for Lug them. Luxury for them, yeah. that's right. But yeah, I mean, and I'm sure there's guys that like other things, other things they use. These are the things we use. We've had good success with them. The grass ones, we've had good success. The plastic ones are good. Any way you want to go. Uh, don't don't put uh, hay in the loft or grass clippings no good. for birds to, to make bedding in because they heat up. 
Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's another, that's that's another great tip. Moisture in there, things start heating up. What <laughs> things should you not put in there? So, uh, grass clippings. What else did you say? Hay is another no-no. Yeah, hay. It's the same as uh, it's a glorified grass clipping and hay. That's all it is. Right. Yeah, don't put that in there. Uh, what else should I say? Uh, I'm not a big fan on, on the shavings. I just, I don't see pigeons going and picking up shavings. I wouldn't put shavings in a nest bowl, nest box. I wouldn't do it. Uh, we've imported enough pigeons on shavings. They come on shavings and you get nothing but respiratory. I look at pigeon shows. I go to pigeon shows. I go to Kentucky. All I hear people say is when I come back from the show, my birds are full of respiratory. Why? What were they? They were in shavings all week. They were in shavings. Let me ask you shavings are not me. good. I'm going to ask you something. Go ahead. When you go to a pigeon show, right, and you're in there, there's a thousand birds in a in a, a, a an arena, auditorium. arena, auditorium, right. How do you feel when you walk out of there? Do you not feel your I'm, nostrils I'm, are full, I'm, full of? of I am. T- of, of, I am telling dust? you. I'm telling you. I hate it. I feel congested. It's not good. Try something. Take a widowhood basket, a six compartment widowhood basket. Put a good shot of shavings in there. Put six pigeons in the basket. Okay, and leave the basket for about two days. Close like you would ship it. When you open the basket and take the birds out, the temperature whoo, will be through the roof. It's going to smell. Yeah. Pigeons don't like shavings. If they could say one thing, I swear, I think they would say, don't put me on shavings. Don't put me on shavings. I, I, I'm saying... Uh, I've been uh, in Europe. I've seen the wood chips there. It's different than these, these shavings we have in Europe. They're not wood chips. They're, I don't know what they are. They're, what they're, are they? They're, uh, it's bark shaving. Bark, uh, when they clean the bark off the trees. Something like that. It's, it's, it's totally it's different. The pieces are this long. They're bark off the bark from the trees. Yeah, yeah. it's just different. The, I, don't the, even forget, know, well, I don't even know how they get them. Forget shavings. We, we have a comment here from Glenn, and Glenn says, My birds love making their nests from cedar twigs from our hedge. Cedar twigs from the hedge, that's right. And cedar, bugs, no go. So cedar, yeah, cedar twigs, that's yeah, right. That's and, right. And, and again, it would be amazing. Take our Avery, Leah, which maybe we should do, right? Right. We should put some newspaper out in the Avery. Ha ha, fun. Let's put some shavings out in the Avery. Let's put some twigs. Let's put some grass. Let's put this. Let's put that. Let's put 20 things in there. And let's make sure every nest bowl, different ones, are completely empty. And let's you know see what? what they pick. Let's see how many of them pick up what they pick up. Maybe well, that's we're a great idea. For fun. Yeah, let's do that. For fun. We're going to do it for fun. You don't know why? Because this is learning. This is learning, and we're all learning together, and I think that that would be a great idea. So that's something that we will work on I for think, next week. I think if you can get, for the bottom of your nest bolts, if you can get it, excuse me, peanut shells, like the shelling off the peanuts, right. or if you can get it, uh, corn husk, right. corn husk. The, 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 it's, just, that's a, it. it's just a lot of jumping through hoops. Yeah, you know what I say? You're going to get this you know what? Let's keep it simple, right? We don't want these people to go running around looking for... Next thing, they're going to be saving all the peanut shells. Forget that. Where are you going to get the peanut shells? You know what I mean? Could you, could you do me a favor? What? Could you get us some peanut shells? <laughs> I have a bag right now. So I think that's what we'll do. We're going to plan something maybe for next week where we're going to put these different materials maybe in the Avery in piles, and we're going to video it, and uh, we're going to see what the pigeons go for to make their nests. That's hey, a good little experiment. I, I think it's great, and then we can kind of see, you know, I gotta find some pine needles here. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, Chris also. Right. Chris says, this, you, this is a, this see is a, these pine trees. You go underneath. Boy, go up here to the uh, pine forest. Hey, uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, if you see Loft Manager Richard in your yard with a rake, don't call the cops on him. He's just cleaning up the pine needles. Go ahead, Leah. There's a question there from Chris. Uh, no, well, Chris says that he's had pigeons on an open loft, and he's seen the birds steal nails out of a bucket and build a nest that week. And uh, he had a winner. That's motivation. That's crazy. He well, picked up a nail. Well, the nails uh, creates irrigation in the uh, nails. Right. right. So you're going like this. 
Listen, we, we've seen birds just it's take, it's take a, a bunch of feathers and make a nest with feathers. You know, you get you leave the you get one pair in the section there or whatever, and you go, wait, we've got another question. Uh, Tracy says, can we bet on what the birds pick? <laughs> Well, if yeah, we want to do, we're, we're we gonna could. Have some betting for that, of course. Maybe, maybe, have, maybe we'll, you know what we'll do? I'll run a poll. I'll run, we'll a, run poll. a poll. I'll put the uh, the the materials that we're gonna put in there, and I'll run a poll, and you guys pick what you think that they're gonna use the most of. How about we do that? Hey, that works for us. Now, I think we've talked about light lighting, separating, and some nest bowl options. And now, do you think it's time now for the special guest? Now, now yeah, I, I, we're going to bring in the special I, guest. I think it would be good. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, uh, some of the people that have come in. And if someone else has any more questions or any more advice, throw her in. Questions, yeah. Come on in. in. Yeah. Now, here we go. This is the tip of the day. Okay. Tip of the day. Take a look outside. It's snowing. It's blowing. Food is at an all-time low. We have a special guest for you. See my thumb or my pinky finger, okay? If your finger can find holes like this in your lock, you find a hole where your thumb can go in, you may be in trouble because he's right around the corner. Ricky, bring up your friend. Drum roll, please, for Ricky. Everybody at home, do your drum roll. This is Loft Manager Richard's special guest and a lesson for you all. There you go. Can you folks see him? If your finger, your thumb can go in in a circular motion in. Don't put your thumb in there, boy. Don't put my thumb in here. You may get one of these. And when these come into your loft, weasel you're, or mink? You're done. This is a weasel. This is a weasel. You get this in your loft. This is a female. He kills them and he piles them up. And they do it like about this quick. So, there's your tip for today. If you have... If you see in your loft, let's just call a spade a spade. You have mice in your loft? There's okay. Nobody can see you. Raise your hand. <laughs> Look, I'm raising my hand. You have mice in your loft. You have mouse, one mouse, two mouse, 20 mouse. This critter can get in there absolutely no problem. And the thing is, this critter will kill all your mice first. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And then he goes for the pigeon. He's going to kill your pigeons. And if you have a loft where no mice can get in, you're okay. But then he can get in, you're done. And what we're saying is, if you have no mice getting in your loft, but you have a nice big Avery, and the cubes are big, big cubes, you know, cubes, yeah. nice size cubes, and it looks great and it's strong, and can shit, you can, you can climb on it. I'm this little guy will get here, in. Right here, I'm gonna put him down. So there you go. There you have it. Tip of the day. Watch out. These things get in there, and they look so friendly and so sweet. But uh, there's well, the devil. Mike oh. Vanderyak says that a one inch by one inch wire will not stop them, not even slow them down. Yeah, hundred percent. Mike's a hundred percent. One inch by one inch. Oh yeah, yeah Mike. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, so when, I, I, when, uh, Mike, I think you have to go half inch by half inch. Put it this way, guys. If your pinky can't get in, you're you're gonna be pretty <laughs> much okay. <laughs> Just keep the wire tight. That's it. And 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 I see these people. You, you see them with the wire floors. You go to you out whatever with the wire floors. Those oh, are the, yeah. those are the weasel floors. The weasels just come on up and in. Some places you go, they don't have weasels. Yeah. But building a loft here in in North America or in Canada, at least, do yourself a favor. Use well, a small wire. <laughs> you're, uh, you know what? How many times, I guess, in the years I've had pigeons. These are real. I, I'm going to say I've had them 60 years. I've really only had about, I, I'm not lying. 10 years of problems. No, wait. I've had about four attacks in that time. So, but I'll but be honest, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll be honest. Listen, 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 remember, remember the time when the, when, the, when the weasel wiped out about 30 pair down in the barn? That was a fun one. He did it in one night. He was just piling them up. And he, they like to make their piles. And I'll tell you, we didn't catch him in the loft where he got in. We caught him in another loft. We sealed that loft up. 
and he had such a taste for pigeon, he moved over to another building, and bang, that's where we nailed well, We tried to get him in there, but I have heard one guy told me he had his loft so sealed. Right. Like, it was like drywall, yeah. everything sealed with wire and all this. The darn thing got in there. Don't ha don't ask me how. Cleaned out. He had fifty birds in there. Cleaned God. forty birds out in they, one night. They do it in Done. a night. There's the devil. Oh, we got a question. You, Little Ian's you in the house. What? You hate, you hate <laughs> to. You hate to. Uh, yeah, it, you hate to say it, but he's the, de the, he's the devil. He's the devil. He's the devil. He, he will get you. That thing's so sweet in the cage. Oh yeah. Ian is asking, what kind of wire is in your stock pen, Avery? Uh, it's half you know inch what? by half inch. If I were to hold this cage up, it's, it's, it's half, half of that. this. So I'm going to hold this up in front of the camera. You see those cubes? It's half of that. It's half of that. But you see this here, he can't get out of. But that's the, 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 the I think this cubing here is fine. But the uh, the one we have here by, by half by half like Mike yeah said, that's exactly um just let me sorry to interrupt but Klaus Petzold says yeah half by half inch that's what half yeah. by half inch yeah like, right. like Mike said one by one cubing it will not work no no the, 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 these things they're, they're they're just like we say if you got if you have mice if you have a mouse in your loft it's not the end of the world please just it's not but if you have mice that means these can get in. And, so and I think, it, it is a kind of an indicator. It's an indicator. You know what? In your hallway, your loft, you know what I want everyone to do? In your hallway, your loft, put about 10 pieces of corn in the hallway and let it sit there. Just leave it. You'll find out if we have any mice, right? Oh, look, I, out of 10 pieces, I got four. I know I have mice in here. So if you have a mouse, you have a weasel. Once he gets hungry, but he digs a little deep. Don't mind me saying. Go ahead. It's so hard to keep mice out. It's hard. The only way I would keep mice out, you want to build the lock perfectly. You got to go okay. wire around everything. Wire on the floor. Wire up the walls. I know. A half inch by half inch. Wire all the way around. Basically, you're making open. Basically, you're making a Christmas gift before you ply with your lock. Yeah, that's right. And 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 you know what? Is it possible to do? No. Again, it's, if you. It's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to do. So we're just saying, if you do see, I see. I had one guy told me his loft was like a his house. I know. It was drywall. There was all Listen, sealed. Every house has mice. The weasel got in and killed forty birds. I'm scared to go to bed tonight. Leah, what are we gonna do? Well, that's just a good reminder for everybody. And I think you know some people say, well, I have dogs, so because I have dogs, or you know, they're not, the weasels stay away. I think that that's, if the weasels are hungry enough, if you got, the if you got dogs, or, or the raccoons, or whatever else can get I, in there, if they're hungry right, enough, think, and, the, uh, and the food, the food is short, there's a food shortage, and they're hungry enough, it's the will to survive, and I do honestly believe that they will find a way in if they're hungry enough. I think, I do think dogs, a dog will help. But the weasel figures out when the dog's sleeping. Hey, it's right. just like people have dogs always, and the always, raccoons always, get. Always it. remember, just get a little hungrier, a little hungrier, a little hungrier, a little hungrier. Eventually, you know, what you say, forget the damn dog. That's, I gotta I live. Eat. I gotta live. Yeah. I have to survive. One hundred percent. So that's 100%. a good lesson for everybody. Uh, you know, Richard and Ryan, their loves they think are fairly secure. And uh, where did you catch that little guy? Where'd you catch him? Well, we have we have a whole, one of our holding lots where we got some of our Icelandics. We got them on the on the ledge there. We always keep we always keep a. Let, let me say something. Trap I've set. seen, believe it or not, guys will say, "Ah, oh, I don't keep light. I don't I don't let mice in my loft. I have no mice." I seen one time in a loft. We had four sections in there. Yeah. Honest to God. The birds, I'm feeding the birds. The birds are feeding. I seen a, a weasel yep. running along the wall. But well, here the weasel there, there he is. He's oh squeaking. my goodness. The cat's bottom. I seen the weasel running along the wall <laughs> between the sections because we had the, the know, lats. We the had lats. The lats. 
between the sections. Da -la. He's going along the wall. Yeah. Along the wall <laughs> with a mouse. It is in, in his in, in his mouth. And my birds. Yeah. Listen to this one. My birds were eating like it's like this is normal. They, they weren't because the weasel had no attack on them yet. And what we're saying is, if you see your mice, you have no, you and have you, no have, you have no weasels. But you go all of a sudden, shit! I used to have twenty mice. You know, they run down. I throw the feed. They're there. They're with me. They're happy. They're yeah. part of the team. Yeah. Hold on. If you see no the mice, mice, are gone. What's going on? The, the next morning, you wake up, you go in there, and you see Pigeon Mountain. <laughs> Guess what? It's like it's like. Remember when you played Nintendo? Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know. And you know what? The problem with these little guys thing. are, they don't care about pedigrees or nothing. They always go for the most expensive ones. <laughs> now, so that bird that's in there. Yeah, little baby. He ate half of that thing. Yeah, today. So there you go. That is our special guest, and we hope that's, today that's the, on, uh, on. I'm going to wrap this up because we've been about an hour, and I'm sure everybody needs to eat dinner or do go to do. Yeah, we're course. having a good time. But uh, thank you guys so much for the interaction today. I think it was a very educational show. Sorry about the audio issues at the beginning. But I think now we're starting to find our groove. Uh, this is Breeding 101 with Ryan, myself, and Loft Manager Richard. Episode 2, where we talked about lighting, separating, and nest bowls. If you just caught the broadcast at the end of the broadcast, not to worry, folks. You can always watch the rebroadcast on Facebook. Or I'm going to upload it to our YouTube channel. Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, I've created a special playlist for all of our breeding videos to help you guys. Everybody, thank you guys so much for the feedback, everybody who tuned in. We hope this is helping. I'm not sure when we're going to be on next, Ryan, because tomorrow is New Year's Eve, I believe, isn't it? Yes, it is. So I will do a post when we're going to go live again. If you guys have any suggestions on what you'd like to talk about in the next broadcast or some questions or tips or topics that you want to address uh post them in the comments or send us a pm at the pioneer club on facebook and we will absolutely talk about them we're free and open to talk about whatever it is that you guys want to do talk about i think yeah. that's it for me ryan we, uh, go ahead ryan. we're we're good we're going to be back maybe we'll be back new year's day maybe we'll throw something together uh again we, we're going to be getting ready here to pair up so you're going to follow us along there we're going to pair some certain pairs up we have an individual pair we're going to be doing uh, and we're going to do some love pairing. And we're going to talk about that, I think, on our next uh, broadcast. Sure. Um, and again, guys, with your pigeons. I, I really appreciate the, the support. The, the experienced pigeon flyers yep. that are coming on. And helping and, the show. And, 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 and asking questions, which they probably know the answers for them. But they're answering, they're asking questions, which is, which is, uh, communicating an education for 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 uh, uh, inexperienced pigeon keepers. And right. remember, you're never you you're never too old to learn. Yeah, and you cannot be a pigeon flyer until you are a pigeon keeper. That's right. Understand that. So and hey, that's, what, that's what we're trying to do here with this show, folks, is to just kind of educate and help everybody along and create a little community where we all help each other. The older fellows and girls helping the younger fellows and girls out and leading the way and hopefully to make this sport great again in this country, in North America, and worldwide. I think that's it. I'm Leah. That's, that's it. Ryan. That's hey, 100%. Guys, go to our YouTube channel. <laughs> Feathers Elite Pigeon Auctions, hit that subscribe button. That's all we ask. Ricky, show two. Okay, I'm, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say one We're thing. We're wrapping it up. It's we, should, done. We, we should, we should pull a draw. Pull a draw. Between the, the, the four people. Four people. That came in today. Okay. Put their names in a, in a box. Okay. We will pull it. What are we going to pull? Oh. Whoever gets the name pulled out, we will ship <laughs> this guy right to your house. Right? <laughs> You know what? Or we'll Hoover them. Or what? You know what? Do you know what? You know what, you know what though, Richard? You, you know what though? Know what? We get a, a drill bit like about this big. Honestly, no, Dad. And honestly, to be honest, I think that that is a great idea. I think what we're gonna do is we had so many good comments and questions. Everybody who commented and questioned on today's show, we're gonna put their names in the draw. In, a, in the barrel and on the next show we're going to pull a name and they're going to get a something a, a gift 
from us for your participation. Hey, Leah, okay. these, these brand new Pigeon Boss hats, I'm going to tell you, I think that should be the gift. There you they go. They come black, white, or pink. pink. I think the pinks are great. Yeah, I'll have a pink on the next one. Hold on, just leave that, Ricky. Just, just leave it. Oh, that okay. is what we're going to do. We're going to take down everybody's name that commented how do you, how do you before think? How do the you pink people ones. think? What? Leah, I'm going to take my thing off here. There you go. How do you like that, boys? I like it. That's good. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take down everybody's name that commented while the show was live. We're going to put them in the barrel. And on the next show, we're going to draw for a pigeon bot hat. Pigeon Boss hat, your choice, pink, white, or black. There you go. I'm Leah. That's Ryan. I'm Ryan. That's Richard. As we say, uh, uh, the other thing I'm going to say, we're, oh, we're right. ending. It's done. That's a female. Right? If I get a male, we'll bring <laughs> the cell baby cage okay. and put the pair to you. Got it. All right. If we don't end this, he'll be here all night. Thanks for flying with us. We'll see you on episode number three. Oh. Enjoy those pigeons and remember, don't overthink. Turn the lights on. The other thing is, let the good times roll. Leah, wrap it up. We're done. Happy, Happy New Year, Year everybody. Happy New Year. Thanks, Bye. guys.